I enjoyed the talks very much also. I, I love this term, failureology. I think uh, it's new to me, and it's something that I'm going to pass on to my students here at Columbia, uh, teaching them how to write about science in real time, uh, without the luxury, generally, of, uh, of hindsight. How on earth are we supposed to cover each piece of scientific news, given the extensive ways in which uh, failureology uh, shows us uh, that the story is more complicated than it generally appears in the paper and then in the press. The, uh, that lovely slide that uh, David opened with of the locomotive that's gone off the tracks, that kind of failure, um, journalism is very, very good at covering. And uh, in fact, I remember with the Exxon Valdez oil spill, uh, the Exxon PR people's defense when they were getting this maelstrom of press around the world was, why is the press so interested in this failure? Why don't they focus on all our successful efforts to transport the oil? Why do they have to focus on our failures? Well, the answer, I think, is obvious with the locomotive and obvious with a titanic oil spill, but how do you how do we cover um, the, how do we communicate the uh, the process of science better when all of the incentives are perpetually to celebrate immediately to celebrate whether that celebration is is warranted in the long run or not? So I think this is this is just incredibly useful to be, to be looking at uh, these case studies and to be thinking about failure systematically. And I'm really looking forward to learning more from all of the speakers and then trying to pass that on. And I just want to, I just want to add one more category, meanwhile, to, to failureology, which is the failure to communicate. Many times, in hindsight again, a breakthrough is made and fails because the discoverers fail to communicate it properly. And uh, the classic example here in the history of science is probably Oswald Avery at what was then called the Rockefeller Institution, who discovered with, uh, with two younger colleagues in the 1940s that um, contrary to all expectations, the molecule that carries genetic information is DNA and it's not a protein. And he had a lot of trouble getting that idea across. So my time is up. But that was a failure in communication, uh, not a failure in uh, the apparatus, as uh, Yuta points out is so, so frequently the case, or a conceptual failure. And uh, that deserves to rank among the primary examples of uh, in failureology. Okay.